my name is Teresa, and today I'm going to be talking about memory management in Python. So let's start off with a little exercise. I want you to determine whether the six blue boxes you see should say true or false. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. So you may notice that the first three statements that you see, they both all use a double equal sign. And if you're familiar with Python, you'll know that that checks for equality. Are the values the same? And so it may come to you as no surprise that all of these are true. So what does the is statement check for? The is statement checks for something we call for identity. So basically, are we referring to the same exact object that lives in the same memory location? For x and y, which refer to high with an exclamation point, this will be false. However, the other two will be true. How does Python decide whether to create a new object when you have um, something with the same value? That may be one question you have. Another question you may have is, what does this have to do with memory in the first place? The point of the last slide you saw was to kind of show you the way that Python manages memory or just manages different strings and in, um, integers is not the most intuitive. And this ultimately affects how Python stores objects and it also affects garbage collection or how Python is going to clean up memory. So, um, so throughout this presentation, I'll be focusing on these two concepts. This may be interesting to you if you've ever wondered what's going on behind the scenes or have wondered uh, why your program has spikes in memories from time to time. So the first thing to keep in mind throughout this entire presentation is that everything in Python is an object, even integers and um, strings. That's why if you use a dir method on a number like two, you'll get these properties associated with it like you see on the top. If I did the same thing in another language like JavaScript, you can see I'm not getting anything back. I'll only get something back like a list of properties if I check an object. The second thing to keep in mind is that every, um, all variables in Python are just references. They're not talking about the objects themselves, they're just references to the objects. So for instance, some people may call me T, a nickname, or other people may just call me by Teresa. But regardless of what they refer to me as, they're talking about the same exact person. Variables work in a similar way in Python. This is not the way that all languages handle it. Like for instance, C, which C Python is built on, if I create two variables with the same value, like A and B to 256, they're going to live in two different memory locations. If I reassign one of the variables to a different value, like A to 134, the location does not change, just the value will. However, if I did the same thing in Python, you can see that you'll have two pointers to the same memory location. And if I did the same thing again and I reassign A to 134, we lose one of the references to the um, location that had 256, and now there's a reference to a different location. So this is something we call interning in Python, which is when Python um, points to the same memory location for um, certain integers and strings. And Python does this as a default as a memory optimization for certain numbers and strings. So in Python 2.7, or just Python 2, all numbers from negative 5 to 256 are interned as a default. So no matter how many variables you have that refer to 100 in your program, you're talking about the same exact object. In Python 3, the, num the range of numbers has expanded. For both Python 2 and Python 3, all strings of a certain size that only has lowercase and uppercase a to z, numbers and underscores will be interned by default. So for instance, if I assign p and g to pi Gotham, you can see that it falls under the range of those characters. So if I check the id method, which is how you can find the memory location of an object in Python, you'll see that they're the same. So if I look at p is g, that will evaluate to true. However, if I change this example a little bit and add an exclamation point, like for x and y, you can see now that if I use um, the id method once again, they're not pointing to the same memory location. You can see that x ends with 0, y ends with 4. So if I look at x is y, now that will evaluate to false. If you really wanted to, you could intern these yourself manually by using the intern method. This can be found in the sys module in Python 3. It's also just built in in Python 2 as a default. So if I manually intern x and y now with pygotham with an exclamation point, you can see now they're pointing to the same memory location and x is y will evaluate to true. 
you may be wondering why would you do this in the first place? So if you did this with something like Hamlet, you interned every single string that you found there, there would be significant memory improvement. So you would go from over 31,000 objects to uh, less than 5,000 objects in your program by interning every single um, string. In addition, the, num um, the number of bytes will decrease from over 1,700,000 bytes to a little over half a million bytes. So it can help your program if you have a lot of strings that you know you're going to re frequently refer to over and over again. However, you may not want to do this because you will be using some CPU every time you call in turn manually. And in addition, um, if you're not going to repeat the strings, you might just end up actually creating more memory for yourself when you don't need to. If you thought we were done talking about interning, we're not quite there yet. So let's look at two other examples. Example one and example two. I want you to determine whether these, once again, should be true or false. Um, or basically, will the two strings be interned? If you think example one should be interned, you are correct. Example two, if you thought that it was interned, that is false. And this is because interning in Python happens in compile time, not run time. So when Python is um, basically changing the code to bytecode. You can check this yourself by using the dis module in Python, which shows you disassembled bytecode. So you can see in example one, there's no addition happening. PyGotham is already set for both um, sides. And this is because of a peephole optimization that Python has. So basically, it does certain um, operations in advance, like addition, and so, um, just to make your f um, program faster. However, if you reassign part of it to a variable, like you see in example two, I assigned Gotham to NYC, that people optimization goes away, and you can see that there is a line where doing the addition in runtime. So, um, interning is one way you change references to objects in Python, but there are other ways that you increase reference counts. So every time you create a variable, that creates a reference count to a string or whatnot. So here, if I assign x to wow with an exclamation point, you can see that we have one reference. If you uh, assign another variable to that same variable, you'll see that that will increase the reference as well. When you use it in a function, that will create a temporary reference. And if you put it in a container, like a dictionary or a list, that will also create another reference. So you can see right now, I have four references to this string. This will decrease when the function ends, when you reassign y to a different string, like a literal x instead of um, the variable x. If I remove it from the container or remove the container itself, or I just remove the initial assignment that I created. And now you can see that wow has zero references. And when that happens, Python knows to remove it from memory. Um, this is not the way that all languages work. A lot of languages like Ruby and modern JavaScript use something called mark and sweep. So the way that they store their memory is every time you assign a variable, they put some memory on the linked list. So you can see N1 is assigned to ABC, N2 is assigned to DEF, and it's going to take up some memory in the program. When you reassign the variables, in, um, like for instance, I reassigned N1 to JKL over here, that will create more space, but the old um, um, assignment, ABC, will still live in the program. This won't go away until um, the garbage collection actually happens, and in order for the garbage collection to happen, your program actually has to pause and wait for this to complete. So in this garbage collection, um, the program will mark all the reachable objects, so everything that like N1, N2, N3 I know should live, so it's going to be marked as it should stay in the program. Everything else will be swept away so that new uh, objects can um, take up the space later on. So the benefits of Python's garbage collection is that you don't need to wait for the program um, to pause the program. It will just automatically do it for you when the reference count hits zero. However, there are some issues that come along with this. One issue is space overhead. It's going to take up more space to have this reference count than it is to have like a bit that says I should remove this from the program or not, like in mark and sweep. In addition, there's execution overhead. Every time you create a reference or remove a reference, that's going to take up some, it doesn't come for free. There's an execution overhead. Another issue that might happen is something called a reference cycle. So let's look at how this might work. If I create a class called character and I create two instances of this class, Tom and Jerry, at this point in the program, Tom would have one reference, Jerry would have one reference. 
When I assign Tom's nemesis to Jerry, that increases Jerry's reference count by one, so one to two. And the same thing happens here. Now Tom's reference will increase from one to two when I assign Jerry's nemesis to Tom. So what happens if I remove these from my program? I assign both Tom and Jerry to none. There'll still be one reference to both Tom and Jerry, and that's because they're referring to each other. Um, when you assign something to none, it's not get removing the fact that Tom's nemesis is Jerry and Jerry's nemesis is Tom. And if you want to check this in your program, you could by using the get refers method in the GC module, which is the garbage collection module. So you can see before I removed anything, there are two references to both Tom and Jerry. If I want to check, does something live in the memory later on? Before you remove them, you should get the memory locations. I'm going to just get the ID for Tom to, for this example. And if I use the ctypes.cast with the memory location as the first argument and ctypes.py object as my second argument, you can see that I still have a character instance even though I assigned Tom to none. If you want to um, manually remove this reference cycle, you can kind of re um, change your program a bit or you can use something called a weak reference. And a weak reference will basically make it so the reference count doesn't increase even when you assign it to something. So for instance, if I did sort of a similar example using Batman and Joker, but when I assign them to each other's nemesis using weak ref ref, you can see if I use the get refers method now, there's only one reference to Batman and Joker, not two. And once again, if I remove them from my program and I check Batman's memory location, Instead of a character instance, now I get a segmentation fault, which is what happens when Python tries to access a memory that it can't reach. So if you didn't handle this yourself, um, Python will eventually handle it for you by using something called generational garbage collection. So this, like mark and sweep, is a stop the world pro um, algorithm, so your program needs to stop in order for this to complete. It's only for mutable objects, meaning things like lists and dictionaries, because integers and strings can't be caught in reference cycles. And it's three generations long. So whenever you create a variable, it'll start at generation zero. If you do the garbage collection and it survives, it moves to generation one. If a garbage collection happens again and it still lives, it'll be moved to the oldest um, generation, generation two, which it will live until it remo is removed from the program or your program ends. You can ch um, change how often it runs by using the get threshold function in the GC module and newer um, objects will be checked more frequently than older ones based on this idea that newer objects die younger. So once again, let's look at how this works. So let's say that we have this reference cycle that we're stuck with, with Tom and Jerry, but we also have a living object, Kanye, that has two references because he's referencing himself. <laughs> so the first step is you have to update the references, meaning we just copy the reference counts. This is because this, we will eventually change it and we don't want to affect the actual program when we're doing the garbage collection. So since Kanye has two, he has two reference counts, a GC ref of um, Tom and Jerry will be set to one. After we do this, we're going to subtract all the references objects have to each other. So since Tom is referencing Jerry, Jerry's um, reference count will go down by one, so one to zero. Same thing with um, Jerry. Tom, Tom's reference count will go from one to zero. And since Kanye is referencing himself, his reference count will also decrease by one, so now he'll only have one reference count. And the last step is we're going to try to see, can I remove any of these from the program? And you can see right now that Tom and Jerry both have zero references, so they should be removed. And now Kanye is the only object living. Him and his generation will move from generation zero to generation one. But what if something a little different happened? What if in addition to referencing himself, Kanye also had a pet who was Tom? Should Tom be removed in this case now? He has two reference counts, but they'll both be removed in the garbage um, collection because it's both references. What about Jerry? Neither of she, this, um, these should be removed now because they are associated with a living object. So Python knows this. So before we remove tentatively unreachable objects, which are Tom and Jerry, it will traverse all living objects, so like Kanye, and see all the references they have. And at this point, it will be moved back to reachable and everything here will live in the program. So some notes on garbage collection. You saw um, in step one, we had to copy all of the references. So those are copy on writes and you will see a linear increase on memory because of this. 
and it can have some performance effects in your program. So for instance, Instagram actually temporarily removed um, generational garbage collection from the program, and when they did this, they saw a 10% increase um, performance improvement. However, they eventually did go back to garbage collection by changing Python a little bit, but you can read about that in their blog. And there's one more issue when we are talking about generational garbage collection, and that is finalizers. So that's anything that has a Dunder-Dell method, so, um, which is called any time the reference count of an object hits zero. So if you ha created your own um, finalizer, Python up to Python 3.4 would not even look at it. It would just not care about it because it didn't know whether to prioritize its own finalizer or your custom created finalizer. With Python 3.4, that has changed a bit. Um, so it tries to revive all the things that have um, this finalizer associated with it and if it, um, to check if it can be removed from the program or not. So if you got anything from this program, it is one, everything in Python is an object. Two, most of the garbage collection in Python is done through reference counting. And three, anything that cannot be done by reference counting is handled by generational garbage collection. So thank you so much for listening to this talk, and thank you to my coworker Hugo, who helped me a lot through this, and these are some references if you want to learn more. Thank you.